Welcome back to another episode of Weddy TV. In this episode, we're going to explore a few different hunting techniques we use when spearfishing in New Zealand. They can be really effective at getting a variety of species. Today we're heading over a sandbar and although it's pretty flat, I always show lots of respect in these situations. When you're coming up to a bar, you want to be able to put on the speed really quickly if need be. Watching the sets as they come through and go when the water's flat. You don't want to be caught in the middle of a bar with a big set coming through and not being manoeuvrable enough. Johnny. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. What do you reckon? Oh, 10, 15 maybe. Oh, it's pretty good, eh? Can you see the bottom, can you? Oh, I see the bottom. Clear. Oh. Let's go. John with a quick viz check and it sounds like it's primo. You can see where the weed is meeting the sand. This is a great location to start looking for things like boarfish, John Dory, Teriki, Kingfish, and all sorts of other pelagic fish. We came across this sunken cray pot, and I want to go down and see if I can undo the rope to allow the float to get to the surface so the next time the cray fisherman can see where his floats are. Can you hold this? I'll, um, I'll undo that rope so that cray pot can get to the surface. A lot of fish are congregating around this rope and this float. It's obviously been here for quite some time and it's all fused together, nearly impossible for me to undo. We head out deep out off the weed edge where I know there's some low-lying reef out on the sand. I always get excited diving this spot. It looks really good with beautiful sort of reef with cracks and holes. But I think there's just not enough kelp or sponges on it to really hold some good species. Although there's a lot of bait fish here, once I get to the bottom, there's not those bottom dwelling fish that I'm looking for. Heading in shallow, we found this really nice drop off just in from the weed edge. It made for good variation in the bottom with tide running along it and the bait fish really enjoyed hanging out. This would be a good place to find big snapper parked up in the kelp as well as pelagic and predatory species 
patrolling up and down. This is a popular technique that people use all over the world, which we would refer to just having some bottom time. With all this bait fishing current, it seemed like a good patrolling highway for big predators. Mm -hmm. So resting on the bottom, I was just gonna see if anything would pass by. Early on in the dive, some small kingfish came past and they were a target species today. In these sort of situations, you want to make sure that you're facing a good direction. You don't want to have fish passing by behind you. So use a structure to your back and look out into the open water. That's most likely where the fish are going to come from. I pull off an absolutely terrible shot and do what you tell everyone not to do and shoot from your hip. You want to make sure when you're taking a shot with your spear gun to extend and lock your elbow. You're less likely to shoot high like I just did then. I think I was trying to be a little bit too smart and tricky and shoot it in the head and I've ended up with a terrible shot. I do my best to keep this kingfish away from the kelp in the bottom because I don't want it to tangle up there and rip itself off. After a quick fight, I do manage to dispatch it after making a little bit of a mess of the fillet. As mentioned with this drop off, it's a really good spot to just hang around on. I'm going to head further up along it. As you can see, the sunlight is coming from a good direction. It's coming from the high point over down off the drop off. With that current running along it, I'm likely to find some fish parked up. Here's another technique we commonly use in the upper north when we snap a snooping. I'm sneaking along the bottom, using the structure and the kelp along with the sun and the current to my advantage to sneak up on fish. This is a perfect situation as I come over and there's a resting snapper. I've got the sun at my back and as usual fish will face into the current so keep that in mind when you're sneaking over rocks. Let's compare that snapper hunting technique to again using bottom time. Often the deeper you go, if you do encounter fish, they tend to be a little more friendly and not so spooky. When hunting snapper in deeper water, again you want to use structure to your benefit. Keep the structure towards your back and face out into open water. Make sure you land amongst bait fish and often they'll surround you and can cause snapper and other species to become curious. This is a really beautiful great spot as you can see big boulders out deep on the sand. On my way down I'll spiral around to make sure I'm facing in the correct direction. Mm -hmm. 
I land near a big bit of structure and sure enough, a nice snapper comes in. It's a real balance between trying to not be seen, but also gain the curiosity of the fish around you when you're trying to get good bottom time. You can maximize your chances and minimize the need to hold your breath if you put yourself in a good situation on the bottom. back into snapper snooping mode in a perfect looking spot here. See how the kelp is pushing back towards me, meaning I'm swimming into the current, I have the sun at my back, and I can see a whole congregation of bait fish over this ledge. It was really surprising not to see a good snapper sitting here. This is all really nice broken country and we're looking for our other target species, the boarfish. With this nice clear water, I spot this one from the surface. You can see it sitting next to that rock there. Although not a perfect example of it, now I'm using a bomb diving technique. I'm sort of landing next to it, which is not what I'd recommend, but I wanted to get nice footage side on of the fish. You want to get above a fish like a boarfish, John Dory or a snapper if approaching from above. Diving down in the open and swimming towards it is not normally the best approach. If you see something like a boarfish like this hanging out on the bottom, Make the effort to swim over and get on top of it before making a dive. Sophie was soon in the boarfish action also. She called me over to, with the camera to, so I could get some footage of her shooting this nice one. She approaches this one from behind and gets a really good shot.
air wanted you here because it was just a big bronzy. Oh, was it? Yeah. Did you not see it? Nice work. Did you spot it from a while away? You saw a bronzy. Yeah, it was nice and clear, so I can see it from quite a while away. But I'd just been a bronzy, so I was feeling a bit <laughs> cautious. So I called Jackson over to so. Nice. <laughs> Do you want to no, keep diving here? Oh, if you want, it's quite nice. Is it clear on the bottom or dirty? Yeah. Oh, it's clear? Yeah, yeah. Wow, you're good, though. You're Dan displays a perfect kill shot on a kingfish, which is what you're trying to achieve. And with that, we'd had enough for the day and had plenty of fish, so it was time to head home and fill it. A quick tip for people out there when filleting, get yourself one of those Sistema containers that have got the grill on the bottom. It helps all the juices from the fish drain off and not surround it. Your fish will last much, much longer in the fridge, even sort of four to five days if you keep it nice and dry. We'll see you soon for the next episode.